All right. What's up, Internet? We are back with N64 Multicart Nonsense. Last time we played some less than great games, including Hercules and Hexen and an unplayable Hey You Pikachu. Now we get to play Hybrid Heaven, which is one of the most interesting games for the system, really. It's also very, very unfortunate because if you want to actually play this thing, you have to sacrifice an entire memory card for memory on this thing. It takes up literally an entire memory card. But it's a very, very weird game. I reviewed this back in the day, and I do believe I have... Yes, I'll start without saving. It's, it's fine. Uh, I reviewed this back in the day. I showed off a gameplay video. I can't skip this. Oh, yes, I can, which is good, because I think there's some mild nudity involved. Anyway, we're kind of in sort of a third-person Resident Evil-style game. What's the what's the button we need for the... Not that! What's the button for the, the shooting button? Nope. That's, one of these buttons does shooting. There it is. Alright, so we got our little gun. We're basically playing Resident Evil right now. Whoa! Alright, alright, alright. Camera. There we go. So... What this game looks like is like a third-person platforming shooting game, right? Well, no. We can talk to this guy if we want. Uh, this blonde guy that we are is actually not the guy we are. They don't explain this until like the second episode of this game, but like, it, it turns out that we're actually like borrowing this guy's appearance. But we're kind of invading this weird sort of biological alien base thing as as the appearance of one of their higher ups it's it's a whole thing don't question it um but it's a weird ass game because this is one of the well once we get there you'll see it but you'll see how strange this game is for what it is oh, is that a thing we can fight come on let me fight a thing i don't think it is ow Okay, hold on. What's the aim button? Aim. Gotta get used to the controls. The controls is use like every button on the freaking controller. Like twice. It's it's a bit much. Alright, so we're stealthing in. Bear in mind this is ostensibly our base. So we shouldn't need to have to fight all the security systems ever, but whatever. Oh, What's the open button? <laughs> Let's just walk into it, I guess. And a life charger. Cool. Alright. Now, I think we gotta charge the key we got with this thing. I'm waiting. <laughs> Hooray! Now we can take the code key and get on with our lives. Alright. So. So we actually get to the actual meat and potatoes of this game. You'll, you'll kind of see why this is such a weird thing. Which I believe starts in the next room, but I'm not sure. It, it's not a huge wait before we get there. I don't think, anyway. Jumping tutorial. Gotta do some Prince of Persia climbing. Lara Croft ain't got nothing on this guy. Woo! Teleport! Or, you know, elevator. Whatever. Yeah, so we're ostensibly a different person, and they don't ever actually acknowledge this until the second level, which is disorienting and confusing to say the most, or say the least. Also, the second level, for some reason, is a running away Resident Evil style chase sequence that makes no sense. Like, a lot of this game feels like it was sort of patched together from ideas taken from other games, and I'm not going to say it's not a good game, it's, it's fun, it's just... Not the most well thought out experience, I don't think. Down, 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 down. Let's get into a, a proper 
bit of game so I can show off why this game is so important and also weird because it's that too. Alright, climb up here. Camera definitely not our friend right now. Look. Look. I gotta get used to, uh... Oh god! <laughs> Hybrid heaven. This game is weird. Okay. I think we can just... do it Or not. Or not. Alright. Am I to shoot this? Or am I supposed to climb it? I cannot remember. I know I gotta get past this thing. Ooh. See if we can push this block. Okay, so running doesn't do anything. Pushing up does not do a thing. That just turns on that. C button. First person mode. Nope, that's that's just camera controls. So unless it's just involves shooting this thing. Which it okay. I don't know why they make you shoot it like six times, because it doesn't look like you're actually accomplishing anything, but that seemed to do it. Alright. There we go. There we go. You're not really getting any feedback when you do that, but I think this is the save point. I think it heals you as well. There it is. Don't want to save, but I do want to continue. For a little bit. Because this game is just very strange. But we actually have to get to a point where the game starts. But I think most of these doors are locked for now, which means the game hasn't actually started yet. It's kind of neat, though, because it's like a combination, like... Tomb Raider-esque third-person platforming thing, slash Resident Evil sort of thing, slash also... Spoilers, but this is an RPG. <laughs> like, proper turn-based RPG. As, as confusing as that is. This game is just very strange. It's, it's just weird, but, like, the actual RPG-ness of this game is so very strange because it's like also a wrestling game and I remember it actually being kind of borked because there was like a huge imbalance to how this game actually kind of works because you could do a, like a whole bunch of like leg sweeps and grapples and stuff but like there was one specific thing that was just really broken that you could do because it was the only thing in the game that didn't have to deal with, like, a, a accuracy check. Because everything else would, like, miss, or, or at least have the potential to miss. Except for this one other thing. Which was guaranteed to, um, hit. And it actually got you out of a lot of danger, too, from what I remember. Yes, I am Mr. Diaz. Except I'm not. Spoilers. Yeah, I might have just, uh... I might have just done a thing that this guy didn't really appreciate. Also, he's now dead. And now suddenly our gun is useless because we have to wrestle. Because reasons. <laughs> Hybrid heaven, it's... Weird. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So. We can guard, counter, or step to the side. We're gonna step. And we're gonna step in that direction. And that makes us just out of reach. And then we grapple. And then we attack. Throw. Because you can punch them, you can kick them, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, but... Kind of like I said, everything has basically an accuracy check, except for grappling. Grappling doesn't deal with that. You're guaranteed to hit. 
And, you know, you can kind of incapacitate your opponent while you're grappling. So, it's not exactly well balanced. You pretty much just spam grapples. It's been a while since I've played this game, but I certainly remember that. Pick up the damn thing. There we go. But yeah, this is, this is a weird game. Also, like Die Hard, it's a Christmas thing. I've actually thought many a year of um, doing a Christmas stream of this, so maybe we'll do that in the future. I have lots of holiday stream ideas that just kind of end up falling through because of plans. But uh, yeah, this is this is potential Christmas stream material. Well, it was both accidentally and intentionally because I didn't know what I was doing, but I definitely didn't want to be like... Hello! Woo! You gonna, you gonna try and attack me through the glass? It's actually some nice foley work for that glass shattering sound. Alright. Ugh, now I gotta do some push ups. Push up. But yeah, this game is just. Very weird, and I gotta give a shout out to Nico for sending me a copy. Because he definitely wanted me to make a video on this, and I didn't. I gotta say, I never really knew about Hybrid Heaven. I, I kind of vaguely was familiar with it, just in the sense it was one of like four RPGs the N64 had. And it's one of the most unique and interesting. I'm not going to say it's like the most well made because that's obviously Paper Mario. But you got to admit, for all the ambition this game has, I think it at least succeeds on some levels. It looks nice, like the motion capture is quite impressive. Those are complex character interactions right there and it does it well. But uh, yeah. Hybrid Heaven, weird RPG Resident Evil wrestling type thing, basically. Not a bad game though. Definitely weird and not perfect, but, but interesting. All right, next we have Hydro Thunder. This is a pretty awesome racing game. I'm mostly familiar with this because I have it on a compilation uh, what was it? Midway Arcade Treasures Volume 3, which was like a weird arcade compilation um, of, of um, you know, arcade racing games. But the weird thing was, it was a compilation of arcade racing games, but apparently like every version of it on it was like a console port, not the arcade version, which was... In some cases better, in some cases worse. Hydro Thunder, I think, had more content, but was lower quality. Uh, this also got a sequel in Off-Road Thunder, which is a game I've always wanted to try, but never had a chance to. Yeah, Hybrid Heaven's kind of weird and all over the place. Level 2, if I recall, was like entirely a, a chase sequence against a giant invincible monster you couldn't fight. It was a very weird game, but... I think it's definitely interesting, you know? And I mean, if you're a fan of RPGs, you don't have a lot of options on the N64. You've got that, Quest 64, Iden Chronicles, which is literally just Quest 64 again, and, like, uh, Paper Mario. And, don't be, to be fair, Paper Mario's awesome, but, you know, you gotta play other games that aren't Paper Mario sometimes. And, I just... Hybrid Heaven's kind of your only choice. God, I hate Quest 64 so much. Like, uh, part of me wants to own a copy just because I want to review it. Because I hate it so much. And also, Q is the only letter I do not have a physical game of. Like, I, I don't have a physical game that starts with the letter Q. It's the only letter I'm missing. And it's like that or Quake 4. And I don't have a lot of interest in Quake. But, like, man, Quest 64 was such a piece of shit. <laughs> oh, Quest 64, man. 
I, I could talk forever about how bad that game that is, but yeah, at, at least Hybrid Heaven was interesting. It was a little me too at times, but you know, it was at least trying to do something interesting and different. And you gotta give that credit. Whoa! I don't know, this reminds me of a lot of Wave Race, probably just because it's boats, but like at the same time, and, and I'm sure this is a controversial hot take, I hate Wave Race. It's been forever since I've played it, but I remember renting it once and just wanting to... I tried to return it to see if I could get like a replacement because the game wasn't like uh, gelling with me, and uh, the video store I rented it from had a policy that wouldn't let you do that. So I decided to just return it an hour after I rented it and just not play anything for that weekend just because I disliked Wave Race that much. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Nintendo definitely neglected RPGs for sure. But like I said before, you know, I don't think I really had a... a for the time, I never really had a... Um, Final Fantasy 7. Because I had an N64 and a Saturn, and no one was renting Saturn games. W. W's this way. So, like, I just kind of had to, aside from Paper Mario, not play RPGs until, like, the GameCube. And then, like, my equivalent of Final Fantasy 7 was Skies of Arcadia. Which, to be fair, is still one of my favorite games of all time, but, like, the N64 needed a lot more RPGs. It just, it just did, and it didn't get them. All right, let's play this, this thing this time. But, I don't know, the N64 feels like it was lacking a lot of things, and that's coming from a guy who is nostalgic for the N64. The N64 is really lacking in a lot of regards, I think. But, you know, at the same time, I'm willing to admit, I think, for the generation, I lost out in general. As an RPG fan, I should have had a PlayStation 1, and I didn't. And, like, even now, I have about a dozen PlayStation 1 games. I, I just don't know much about the system, and I really need to know more about it, but... Like, I, I missed out on that entire generation of awesome games, and I really regret it. Especially now, because... Collecting retro games is getting so expensive. Time Two laps to go. Yeah, like, bringing these guys to uh, Steam would be interesting. The problem is there's no definitive version of it. Which is a bit of an issue. Also, side note, I'm streaming it every Monday. Go watch it. <laughs> but, um, seriously... Uh, Skies, as I've said during my streams, like, there's two versions of it, and neither are really definitive, because you've got the Dreamcast version, which is an incomplete version. Like, you need a bunch of DLC that existed at the time, and you can still find it, but, you know, you gotta use, like, the Dreamcast browser and stuff, which is awkward. The GameCube version has all that stuff and more. It has exclusive content, but the problem is that it has some stuff censored out of it. And while the Dreamcast version, you could argue because it doesn't have censorship, it's like the, the best version, I'll remind you, it has less stuff in it. Like even if you have all the DLC, but also, like it, it just has the worst like uh, enemy encounter rate ever. Oh, excuse me. Like, the, the GameCube version has a very ridiculously high encounter rate as well, but the, the Dreamcast one is, like, triple that. It's just, it's it's got such a high encounter rate, it's ridiculous. But it's still one of my favorite RPGs of all time. And, you know, I, I think it's a very, very good game. And it's probably the closest thing I had to, like, a... Again, for the time... Final Fantasy 7, because I kind of had to skip it, because, you know, again, I had, you know, I, I had played Paper Mario numerous times, but that's a game on a different scale, with, like, a different tone. It wasn't really going for, like, a serious epic, whereas Skies was. 
And then I think, like, the next big game for me in terms of RPGs was probably Tales of Symphonia, which is similarly one of my favorite games. Also a game lacking a definitive edition, which is interesting. But, you know, this there's, there's just... The N64 really was lacking in a lot of things. Like, it had a lot of... If I were to try and, like, summarize the console in general, mediocrity the system would be it. Because it's just got a lot of stuff that's just sort of... At best, sort of, like, B-tier stuff. And, yeah, sure, there was, like, Mario. Sure. And there was Ocarina. But, like, for every one of those, there was, like, 20 things that were significantly less good. You know, and that's... You can say that about a lot of things, really. For every exceptional thing, there's a lot of crap. But at the same time, you know, I just... I feel like the N64, and this is coming as a fan of it, was a very lukewarm system, really. Granted, I also think, like, the best games on the system were, like, obscure things no one ever played, like Space Station, Silicon Valley, and Rocket. So, I don't know, maybe you just have to look a little bit more out of the way to find stuff like that. But, you know, that's, that's part of the greatness of this sort of thing, is, you know, you get to see all the sort of weird stuff you didn't see before. Granted, I also saw a lot of the N64's library. I rented most of it. You know? I mean, case in point, the next game we get to play is Iggy's Wrecking Balls. I remember renting that game. It made me sad. The sad thing is, I don't think it's even really a bad game. It's just very, very sort of aggressively average. I think that's the best way of putting it. And like a lot of things on the N64, it was basically a subpar racing game. But Iggy's Wrecking Balls, at the very least, had something interesting in that it was sort of a different take on the racing genre. And it kind of had platforming, and it kind of had melee grappling. It was interesting. Not good, but interesting. Alright, there. We made third. At the very least, we made third in this race. Hooray for us. And I think now we unlock some stuff, but we didn't save because we didn't save. But now we've unlocked the medium stuff. Eh. But onwards to the next thing. Alright. So. Our next game. Is going to be Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Bear in mind... These Wrecking Balls, as denoted by that apostrophe, belong to Iggy. Even though he's a playable character. Also, this is one of those games, kind of like Gex, that's just filled with obnoxious sound effects. The main character, the titular Iggy, if I recall, is like a generically awkward, bad surf dude. And it's by Acclaim, which is a bad sign, because Acclaim never put out anything of value. Ever. Don't at me, Turok fans. Oh, I remember this game. <laughs> it makes me sad that I remember this game. Alright. So these are all the characters you can play as. If he's Iggy or Cutie or Chatter and Amanda and Charlie and Sunny and the robot. I remember playing the robot a whole lot. And there's actually a bunch of like unlockable characters. Oh god, this game is... Like I said, it's trying so hard to make itself sound cool, and I, I'm I'm betting these are like just programmers and executives just thinking, what do kids say in the 90s that makes them sound so cool, and it's just... It comes across as so awkward and out of touch. Okay. So this is Iggy's Wrecking Balls. It's a foot racing platformer with grappling hooks and you're all balls. I remember this. I don't remember the controls at all, but I remember this. We finished one lap. Hooray! Whoop. 
But you know, I've played worse in 64 racing games. At least this one's interesting. I don't think it's good, but it's interesting. And then we explode the world because we came in first. I think if you come in second, this doesn't happen. But if you come in first, you blow up the entire world because you're the shit. Oh man, this is this is one of those games you rent if there's basically nothing else in stock. You know, this this is like Buck Bumble or like Rayman 2 or Tonic Trouble or or um what was that one really really garbage Star Shot freaking Star Oh my god, we're going to have to play Star Shot. You know the sad thing is when I got this cartridge, the first game I tested was Starshot. I don't know why, either. I have nothing but negative memories of Starshot, and yet it was the first thing I had to test on this multi-cart. Because for some reason, I just felt weirdly nostalgic for Starshot. A game that literally brought me to tears as a child because it was kind of a broken mess. Ugh. Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Man, this game is exactly what it is. The sad thing is, I can see sort of something here that might be kind of good, but it's just so focused on trying to be stylish more than anything, and it's not picking anything that's particularly stylish. It's just kind of slow and awkward and meandering. Oh, Iggy with your wrecking balls. Alright, lap completed. There's also weapons, if I recall. I don't think we've gotten to a point where we've unlocked them, though, since we're kind of going through the tutorial phase. But, that's fine. <laughs> I, I don't want to play more Iggy if I don't have to. Still not the worst N64 game I've ever played. I I can think of ones that are worse. Uh, the Rugrats Treasure Hunt game I remember detesting as a child. Uh, again, Starshot was really bad. I have very negative feelings towards Rayman 2. Like, again, Gen 64 just had a lot of crap on it, really. And, yeah, sure, there was some stuff that made it a really, truly remarkable system, but... I don't know, man. Okay, so there's metal plates now, you can't go through them. But, otherwise, nothing has changed about this. Just continue wrecking your balls, Iggy. You know what's sad? I just realized Iggy is the Iguana Entertainment Iguana. That's what he is. That makes me sad. <laughs> For like a lot of reasons that makes me sad. <laughs> Makes me sad that I just realized it after all these years. It makes me sad that this was supposed to be a mascot. It makes me sad that this game is not very good. <laughs> okay. You know, the idea of racing with like grappling hooks and, and being able to like hook onto your opponents and throw them around, which you can do in this game, that's a valid idea. But. I don't know. There's just so much about this game. I just don't think it's very good. Victory for the big oh, God. This game is trying so aggressively to be cool, and it's just... I was a kid from the 90s. This should resonate with me, and it just makes me embarrassed. Like I said, it... it the voices were probably done by programmers trying to 
imagine what kids sounded like when they were being cool. And they're just so out of touch for the time. <laughs> but apparently someone thought being an iguana head smushed into a ball and talking like a surfer was cool. But the thing is, if you want to be really cool, you didn't use the word cool. You used the term radical. Obviously. Does Skies emulate well? That's good, because that's a great game and it's ridiculously expensive. And people should be able to play Skies, because Skies is good. Woo! Iggy's Wrecking Balls! I mean, I just have a physical copy, so I don't need to, but... <laughs> you know. People should be able to play Skies. It's a hard-to-find game, and it's great, and I think it's, it's one of the must-play games. I have to actually wait. So now it's it could be a tie, it just depends. Nope. I win. I'm sorry, but waiting for platforms is not good for racing. That's bad. That's all kinds of bad. Oh god. There's just Glover! Glover's a worse game than this. Not by a lot, but, you know, I would say this is at least a playable game with an interesting concept. And Glover is Glover. How long is this freaking campaign? Like, we're just on, like, one small bit of a campaign, too. Like, we haven't done the whole campaign. I don't think, anyway. Oh, God. Stop being aggressive and mean. They indeed, because Iggy the Iguana Entertainment Iguana is here to wreck your balls. Oh. God, this game is so exactly what this game is, and it makes me sad that it's this. <laughs> like, I can almost kind of see this game being competent. But I feel like that's being too complimentary to it. Ugh. Yeah, Glover's on Steam, and I'm... I know the history behind why it's on Steam, and it pisses me off. Basically, like, some people decided to buy the rights to it super cheap. Uh, poorly emulated it. Ported it. And then pretty much told anyone who was, like, archiving it to take it down because of legal threats. Like, there's actually a fair bit of controversy to Glover being on Steam right now. And also, Glover, just in general, is crap. It's, it's one of the worst N64 games. I did play the prototype to Glover 2. That was also not very good, though. How long is this freaking... Like, I want to finish this, but... <laughs> I also want to not be playing Iggy's Wrecking Balls anymore. Because... I mean, I rented this once as a kid. That was more than enough playing Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Meow. Oh god. I do not like this map. Nope. Look. Look. Okay. This map is just awkwardly made. Like, this is one of the biggest issues. Aside from the fact that it's trying to be style over substance and failing very hard at it, is it just does not have good level design. It, it's just very, very awkward. Like, I think they handle the camera work relatively well, and the idea of, like, running on tracks 
in like a sort of pseudo 3D environment, but mostly 2D, like that kind of works. But the level design is just awkward. Final lap and I'm behind by a wide margin. But it's also Wiggy's Wrecking Balls, so who cares? I guess I just won't wreck all the balls. And that's fine, I guess. What are these backgrounds? We're fighting in front of a giant cake. Why? For what reason? What is the lore to Iggy's Wrecking Balls? Ugh. That stage was not fun to play. I think I'm still winning by a wide margin. Although, to be fair, I'm losing very, very badly because I'm playing this. Okay, we've been through nine races. How long is this freaking thing gonna last? Whoa. Oh, not fair, dude. This is bogus. Yo. I do kind of like that you can just physically jump on your teammates or your opponents. Just to mess with them. Like, that's kind of useful and fun. But, like, I, I can see bits of this being almost a fun game. Almost. Being the, the key term there, but... And, like, if you got a lot of platforms together, sort of like those, like, starting two or three where you could just grapple between them. You could get some like nice flow going. And that would actually make this a pretty smooth and nice game. But I don't think the core like level design actually works for it. For the big also, the, the voices are just awkward and bad. Ugh, Iggy, your wrecking balls are certainly wrecking balls right now now we're doing it in front of a beach there is no consistency with the backgrounds in this game it's just let's have some backgrounds come on we've done nine races is that not enough okay one lap Wow, it's already so far ahead. Later, <laughs> go, 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 Really nice camera work in this. Gotta give him credit. Like, for everything I think this game does wrong, it does have some good camera work. And at least it has something of it being interesting. And it does have, like, some core ideas that actually are pretty good. Not a great game, but, you know, I, I don't think it's the worst thing on the N64. Not by a wide margin but I missed one gold medal and I'm sad about that but at the same time that means I'm done don't have to play any more Iggy's Wrecking Balls ever until I have to review it anyway Ugh. build up your turbo meter uh, is that a secret technique? Okay, I'll, I'll take that secret technique. No, I, I really don't want to save. Thank you for asking, though, game. Uh, well, that was exactly what it was. It was wrecking balls.
All right, so. Next is In Fisherman Bass Guitar Hunter 64. I'm actually not familiar with this game. Let's see what this one's all about. I'm going to assume it's going to be boring. But let's see. Take two interactive. <laughs> boring balls, yes, probably. Oh, good. More bass guitar. That face is great. I have to be this guy. I don't care if there's other guys. I have to be this guy. Because of that face. Done. I said done. Why do you not... I'm not allowed to press start here. Start apparently just... Fish for fun. So are there going to be giant monsters? Darn. Fish escaped. That's hardly bloody ocarina of time now, is it? You know, I spent a lot of time playing the fishing minigame in ocarina. Throw out there. Catch the Hylian loach. So that we get the uh, heart piece or whatever. Or was that the, the scale you get from that? I can't remember. It's been forever since I played Ocarina. This is very boring. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but I kind of wish I was back playing Iggy's Wrecking Balls. <laughs> Fishing guy, dance off, go! Woo! Alright, good enough. I have never had a chance to play Breath of Fire 3. I saw it once a long time ago in a magazine, and I've always wanted to try it. That's that's definitely one that's up there on my uh, must-haves for the PS1. All right, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. This was a blockbuster exclusive. You actually could not legally buy this because you could only rent it from Blockbuster. I have never actually seen this game before. It'll be interesting to see what this one's all about. I hear it's quite good though. And it uses musics. And this video is probably going to immediately get uh, demonetized by John Williams, like any Star Wars game I ever show footage from. Oh, LucasArts. I remember when you used to exist. It was a much happier time. You made awesome things like TIE Fighter. And Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. Two of the best LucasArts games out there. Alright. So let's select a game. I recognize this font and this exact uh, save thing from Rogue Squadron. <laughs> Looks like Factor 5 might have been taking uh, a day off and, and took it easy with this one. If it's using, like, the same... I don't care about the story of Indiana Jones. I'm sorry, I just want to get to the gameplay of Indiana Jones. Oh. That's a bit, um... Hmm. <laughs> that news article is a bit on the nose for right now. Oof. Okay. American Southwest, 1947. Oh god, this is gonna be like Shadows of the Empire 2.0, isn't it? Did they make Mac Warrior? 
Well, I was, uh, I didn't think that uh, LucasArts made MechWarrior. You might be right about that, though. Oh, hey, it's, it's basically prototype Tomb Raider, but with, like, CGI Harrison Ford. That's pretty cool. I can get behind this. Okay. Okay. Woo, okay. Or, you know, if you're in the know, it's basically Hybrid Heaven 2.0. Except I'm guessing this doesn't have wrestling as, as the fighting style. Which is unfortunate, because, you know, Hybrid Heaven. Gotta keep it real. Okay. Uh, what's the duck button? That's the jump button. That's the nothing button. That's the gun button. Uh, that does nothing. Ah, it's shoulder buttons, just like Hybrid Heaven. Um, camera. There we go. Whoop! Whoop! Ugh! All right, what do we have here? Ooh, good whip cracking sound. Okay. Because every good archaeologist needs a bull whip. This is just factual information right now. That's good fully work for that whip. Can I climb up there? Oh, maybe. Nope, not quite. Yeah, this actually isn't too bad. You know, when I when I saw this, I was thinking, oh god, this is going to be kind of like Shadows of the Empire, but... I mean, it's clunky and clumsy, but that's pretty par for the course for the time. Okay, snake. Fine. Bang. Okay, so do I want to go up here? Yeah, this game actually isn't too bad. I'm so far. I'm kind of all about this Oh, there we go. Oh, no, I want it up there It's a shame this was basically not available for public consumption really Ah, oh, I think I died from poison Continue level? What does... Okay, so Snake is back. Can I... Aim. I don't think there's an ammo camp, too. Either. I think I can just spam shots. Take. No. Oh, that's, that's the other button. Nice! Got a big fancy diamond. Okay. Now I think we want to get across to there. Jump! Okay, climb up. Yeah, this is this actually feels pretty good. Oh, I am loving that whip sound. That is just crisp. Whoopsie. Okay, uh, swim up. Alright. Well, you lost your hat, Indy. Still... You're on a pretty solid N64 game. Huh, no, you just kept it in your pocket. Like a good archaeologist, you keep spare hats in your pocket, obviously. I'll lose my grant for sure. Where are the priceless artifacts? The gilded idols? The crowns of kings?
Bull whip the helicopter. It'll take you to victory. Like Spider Man. Good news never travels that fast. Better get up there. Unfortunately, I think this game costs a fortune, but I'm kind of really digging it. <laughs> if it didn't cost a fortune, I would love to get a copy of this. Because, I mean, so far, I'm actually thoroughly impressed. Okay, well, we got another gem. Which I guess makes us a better archaeologist. Soon we'll be able to gem stud our bullwhip. Like any good archaeologist would. Ooh, is there a thing down here? Not gonna lie. I'm, I'm kind of really digging this. Ooh. Yes, please. An idol. Mm, okay, so let's, let's... There we go. It's definitely a bit clumsy. Not gonna lie. But... I think it's smoother than a lot of other N64 games of its time. I'm actually thoroughly impressed with this. Okay, uh, first person mode. I don't think we can get over there. Although we can get over here. Alright, we're just gonna have Prince of Persia our way over here. No big deal. I don't think we can get there. I don't think we can get over there either. Are those tumbleweeds really in our way? Oh, crap. Alright, well, we didn't die. Well, that guy's dead. He won't be needing this anymore. Alright. Woo! I'm actually thoroughly impressed with this game so far. Alright. You know, making this series, I've played a lot of N64 games and added a bunch that, you know, I, I kind of want to get to my collection now. You know, stuff like... Aero Gauge, that, that uh, weird airboarding game. Um, what was it? Fire Electric Stick. This, I think, has to be one of them. I mean, I, or, I already wanted a copy of this, but, uh, you know, now, now I at least have, like, the experience behind it to say, yeah, yeah, this game's kind of fun. You know, I, again, I'm basing this off of, like, playing it for five minutes, but so far I'm pretty impressed, honestly. And it was made by Factor 5 back when they made good stuff. And not Lair. So that's a plus too. Okay, yeah, so I can't go that way. Whoa! Okay. So. The thing is, I don't think I can jump across to where that ladder is, but it doesn't seem to want to let me jump up to where those, those uh, tumbleweeds are either. So let's take a shot and see if we can just run and jump. Dead. Oh, I'm not dead yet. Hooray. Hooray for not being dead. Okay. Not much music right now, though. I wonder. Nope, can't seem to shoot that. I can't imagine I can burn them. I don't think whips are gonna... You know, I, I don't want to say whips are never gonna help this situation, but I don't think whips are gonna help this situation. I think we just have to jump! Okay, that feels like you should not be able to make that jump. Also, your climbing ladders animation's a little bit wonky there, Indy. Alright. Jump! There we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh god, snake. Clunk, 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 clunk. Don't want to deal with snake right now. Don't have health, and if I get poisoned, we're definitely dead. What's this? Oh, hey. I have the high ground. Ha 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 ha. 
That means you lose. It's like law created by George Lucas. Because actually having the high ground in a sword fight means very little. It actually puts you at a disadvantage. Fun, for, fun fact. Jump! There we go. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't too bad. I don't think there's a stealth option. I think I just have to sort of walk in. Like a total Chad with my bullwhip and my hat. Oh, it's, um... Nikki from uh, good old Pandemonium. What brings you out west? Some psychic premonition about the treasures I should have found? My, look at these wonderful potsherds. It's the new thinking in archaeology. Find some worthless debris, analyze it, understand prehistory. Kind of noble, don't you think? There's an iron curtain coming down on Europe, Indy. The Russians are taking over. I read the papers. Want a real tramp to be noble? We need your help. Uh-huh. Who's we? When I joined during the war, it was the OSS. Now President Truman calls us the Central Intelligence Agency. Is that what you're up to these days? Soviet sabotage? Atomic secrets? Don't be silly. That was complex model interaction right there with his hat. about more, uh, unusual activities. Such as this dig site on the Euphrates River south of Baghdad. Babylon. Remember your Bible? That's where mortals raid for Tower of Babel to invade heaven. Well, you know, this does look like the ruins of a Temenanki. The ziggurat often identified with the tower. Very good, Dr. Jones. You're looking at the brainchild of one Gennady Volodnikov of the Leningrad Physics Institute. He thinks there's some truth to the biblical legend. Isn't he a godless communist? He's a physicist who studies manifolds and hyperspace. Quirky theoretical stuff. Now, what's a guy like that doing in Babylon? Not sure. All we really know is he thinks the atom bomb is a joke. And why isn't the world laughing? Indy, suppose the tower housed some deadly force no one else had ever heard of. Something as dangerous as nuclear fission. And the Babylonians tore it down for reasons not discussed in the good book. Exactly. It's an amusing theory, but as you can see, I've got troubles of my own. You don't think I flew out here from Washington just to relieve your boredom, I hope. This came from the Russian dig site. Now, somebody made a mistake. This looks like part of a steam engine. Maybe a locomotive from the last century. Or a Rolodex. We dated the thing. It's 2,600 years old. Really? Look at that little wheel spin. How'd you find it? Come on, Indy, with a CIA. <laughs> okay, that, that animation's a bit rough. But, uh... You know, otherwise... This isn't too bad. I'm impressed by this. Your head's kind of clipping through that canopy there, Indy. You might want to work on that. Huh. So you can buy... That's pretty cool, actually. Done. Done. I get it. This is an Indiana Jones adventure. I do understand this. Can we skip this now, please? To Babylon! Five. Because it took them five times to get it right. <laughs> that was a bit of a wonky fall animation. Huh. Yeah. Anyway. That was pretty impressive, I have to say. I think that's got to go on my list of uh, must-have N64 games. Because so far, that was that was quite good. Alright, so. Based on these past five games, would I recommend this multi-cart? Well, yeah. Yeah, I would. Hybrid Heaven is weird. Just, just flat out, it's weird and it's interesting. And there's nothing quite like Hybrid Heaven 
anywhere else. It's it's kind of a must-have of the N64. Hydro Thunder is relatively competent. Uh, Iggy's Wrecking Balls feels like it's it's the core concept of a good idea, but it just falls short, you know? I, I wouldn't say it's great, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, Bass Guitar Hunter 64 is boring as all hell, but Indiana Jones, that's pretty legit. I, I got to admit, that game was very impressive. I, I quite like that. Based on these past five games, yes, I would recommend it. Just skip the crappy fishing thing, please. But uh, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, follow the stream to know we go live, because we try and stream as often as possible. Now that we've possibly figured out the problem, I'm going to do some testing of some stuff, but we might be able to get back to regular streaming on Monday. Uh, might do some Saturn stuff, not sure tomorrow, we'll see. Just depends how things shake out. Uh, you might also want to check out and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see everything else I do, which is a lot of stuff. Um, and, and uh, you know, check out and support the Patreon to help me continue to do stuff, too, that I like to do, as I'm fumbling with my words because it's been a little while since I've had to do this. Um, but uh, next time we have... Indie Racing. Oh, that doesn't... Maybe it's Indiana Jones Racing and they're just trying to be cool. And then a whole bunch of football crap. I thought we were through with all this once we got past FIFA. Crap. Yeah, I gotta do sports games. Oh, God. Uh, it's gonna be a short episode, I guess. But, you know, next time we'll, we'll... At least for the Twitch stream, we'll probably do at least two or three streams worth of stuff just to get past all this crap. Shit. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, Internet.